Good evening. Welcome to Quincy Votes 2019, the municipal election. I'm Mark Crosby, and I'm joined by Joe Catalano. Joe, welcome. Mark, great to see you again. Here we go one more time. We're the final election here uh, in the city of Quincy, and it's going to be a busy one, I think, tonight. We should mention that uh, we will have, uh, obviously, we will have results at the bottom of your screen. We will also be uh, talking about those results as they come in. They will be unofficial results. And Joe, why is that? because they're not certified yet by the states. And those numbers, uh, though pretty close to being yeah. accurate, uh, will be finalized tomorrow. But uh, this evening is also a, a chance for folks to listen to the candidates that are on the ballot, and maybe those, some of those that aren't on the uh, ballot uh, this time, but would like to come in and chat. Naturally, we welcome all elected officials to join us. We did, we extended an invitation to uh, all the candidates, uh, both incumbent and challengers, to, to stop on by. A lot of them accept that our invitation. We'll be hearing from them throughout the evening and uh, hope to bring that to you, of course, uh, as folks uh, come into our studios here and then go off to their various uh, celebration parties, I'm sure, that'll be happening all across the city. And we can't uh, stress enough the amount of uh, support that we get from our members, our volunteers at Quincy Access Television. They are at every poll throughout the city. Absolutely. They are getting those numbers as soon as the polls close. They in turn get those numbers to our director who gives those numbers to us and that would leave our job to, of course, give those numbers <laughs> to you. Right. We're just here to look, <laughs> look pretty. <laughs> All the work's happening behind the scenes. But it really it's true, it really could not happen without the dedicated uh, team of volunteers that step up every single time we put the call out on uh, election nights uh, to fan out across the city all 31 precincts and phone those numbers in uh, to us and get them to you. Um, it really is uh, the quickest, most effective way possible to, to cover a city election. And again, we extend our gratitude uh, to them for helping us out on this night. And what a task. Indeed. Indeed it is. You know, it should be an interesting night. The uh, weather was kind of iffy today out at the polls. There was a little rain, there was a little sun, a little wind. <laughs> it's a little bit of everything. I spoke to a city clerk, Nikki uh, Crispo, about quarter past seven or so. She said there was about a 20% turnout citywide at that time. However, she did say that they looked uh, to be about a, a thousand voters in Squantum, which is not surprising. It's a very uh, politically active, active part of the city for sure. Certainly, and uh, Joe and I were at the polls earlier today, so we will have that uh, piece for you. We did uh, speak to some voters, and uh, we did, of course, speak to the city clerk. Absolutely, and of course, another very active part of the city is Ward 1, and we have uh, the incumbent uh, councillor, Dave McCarthy, joining us uh, here in studio this evening. Dave, great to see you. Good to be here, guys. Joe, yeah. Mark, Welcome always a back. pleasure. Welcome back. Yeah, we're here for the, the uh, preliminary, and uh, you did have a, uh, a challenger. We don't have any numbers uh, to report no. just yet, uh, but how do you feel the campaign went, Dave? Good, very good. We worked hard. I have a, um, I've always had, uh, even during my school committee years, a good crew that gets involved, um, and that, that's a big thing. Um, you know, either it's citywide or even in the ward, uh, you want to go out 110%. So uh, I thought we did pretty well. Um, they're a good group of friends, longtime friends. Some people go all the way back to elementary school with wow. me uh, that jump in, and we worked hard uh, right through the, the primary right up to the general election. You and I sat down uh, just, uh, well, about a few weeks ago, actually, and uh, talked about some issues that um, you are dealing with in Ward 1. Uh, probably one of the, the biggest is the preparation for storms and seawalls. Yeah, uh, we had a uh, meeting I believe it was October 30th, uh, last week, uh, a really, really good meeting uh, with probably 60 neighbors, 70 neighbors up at uh, City Hall, uh, which was kind of the introduction of uh, MIG uh, Corporation, which will be the general contractor running the show, Tie and Bond, the engineering company who's been involved, along with uh, Al Grazioso, Paul Costello, and, and some of the city folk, uh, just to start to talk about execution, uh, the timeline. Um, we went over everything, uh, how long it took us to get the permits, which is a long, uh, you know, several months. But um, to give them an idea of what's going to happen in their particular neighborhood from Chickatawbit down to the Willows. The so biggest thing is replacing those seawalls, right, Dave, and making them higher. Making them higher. Yeah. And a big thing, too, I mean, the height is, um, you know, uh, very important, but the drainage mm -hmm, down there. Mm -hmm. 
the drainage, um, as I said before, in the last storm, the big storm in March, we couldn't get the water back out. And uh, the, these seawalls, along with new outfall pipes, uh, working with the Army Corps in regards to another project that kind of ties into this, uh, drainage-wise, uh, it comes at the right time. So uh, all, all positive stuff and uh, um, moving forward with it. If you could uh, update folks, too, about the Maritime Center. Well, the Maritime Center, we're still waiting on uh, a particular green light from the DCR to go ahead and take it down. And we've been waiting for a while. I know that the mayor and uh, Paul Hines, uh, director of public buildings, have been working it. Uh, I'm waiting to get the green light so we can take it down and try to get uh, the new ramp in uh, mm -hmm. before the spring. Right. I was worried a little bit about weather, you know, and again, if it's really inclement weather, of course, you're not going to be out working in it. But... As long as the weather holds up, they'll be able to do that work uh, in the winter. Uh, you know, so they'll be able to put the, unless we get buried. <laughs> oh, please. Hopefully not. No, let's not say that. Yeah. But uh, they'll be able scare. to. Yeah. yeah, I know. I don't want to scare anybody. Uh, they'll be able to um, get that ramp going and get it ready um, for the spring. And um, that'll pretty much give us both ramps operational. Uh, the, the, the original ramp won't go away, oh, okay. and then uh, then we'll lean in a little bit more on the design and the layout of the parking lot and things like that. We'll bring that all back in, and, and that, that, that's a very important thing. That'll really, really uh, brighten up the, the end of the neck and, and give um, that parking lot will give uh, the Yacht Club some relief also when they have events because they have a brand new hall down there. So all good, all good very good project. Yeah. And in less than a minute, if you could just address C Street and Quincy Shore Drive. So Quincy Shore Drive, we are getting there. We're hopefully going to have that third lane coming out of Ward 1 operational. Uh, they'll slow down uh, to a snail's crawl in the winter, yeah. of course, and come back when the weather's better to finish it off. Uh, but we will be having in, um, I believe, early December. Uh, I think I quoted December 5th when we were here the last time, but... Don't hold me to that, but I think we're having our second major uh, Department of Transportation community meeting about phase two, hmm. which will go from Quincy Shore Drive back towards Palmer Street. Oh, okay. And we'll get into everything on possibilities of new traffic signals, uh, median strips, et cetera. So. People are excited that you use that road every day, I'm sure. Yeah, it's uh, all yourself good. included. <laughs> it's all good. It will yeah. keep me busy. Uh, yeah. You know, it will keep me real busy. Yeah. yeah. Great to see you, Dave. Thanks for stopping Thank you. by. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Mark. You. Thanks, Joe. You're it was welcome. a pleasure. Thank Always. you. Always. Very good. Dave McCarthy, Ward 1 uh, counselor, and uh, does have a, a, a challenger uh, this year, a second time for Joe Murphy uh, seeking the Ward 1 seat as well. Again, no numbers to bring to you just yet, uh, but they will be coming in very, very shortly. The polls have now closed. They closed at 8 p.m. And as I said earlier, Nikki uh, Crispo, the city clerk, had hoped for about a 30, 35 percent turnout. Uh, about 7.15 was about 20 percent or so, Mark. So we'll see how that pans out. I think the weather early in the day when we did uh, touch base with Nicole uh, was uh, more favorable at that uh, I think so. hour yeah, than Yeah, we got it, drenched uh, afterwards. Later. Yeah, exactly. That's true. <laughs> uh, but, you know, nevertheless, candidates are coming in uh, to stop by and say hello to us and uh, chat about their uh, campaigns and how it went out on the uh, the streets of the city. And the next one is uh, Joanne Sullivan Cantor. Joanne was running for the, one of the at-large uh, council seats, and she joins us this evening. Hi, Joanne. Hi, how are you? Good, nice to see you. you Great too. to see you. How was it out on the campaign trail? Oh, it was... Um, Really exciting in the yeah. early part of the day, and then the short um, rainfall, which yeah. turned into like two and a half hours. Right, you know? right, yeah. But it was it was good because you're going around different precincts and um, you know getting help from friends with signs and dropping off, picking up, and it's it's a whole learning curve. Yeah, because it's, a, it's a lot of work. Your yeah. first run, right? At yes. Office. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I wish all my kids were home to each hold the sign for me, but yeah. they left the nest and. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, it's, it's a lot of work to run a campaign. Is it it is, yeah. It's a one-man show, so <laughs> like writing it and rewriting it, and you know, printing and learning about all that. Sure. And the turnaround time and deadlines with <clears throat> just the newspaper and the um, and the debates and stuff. It's just, y you know, what I mean. It's, you say, oh, I have some time. Nope. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I I read about you and your interests was in an elder care hospital in Quincy Center? Yes, I, I was, it seems like there's a 
couple of um, different areas that I support, and it, that they don't need to be all in one place. Okay. So, <coughs> um, so uh, being I was the president of the Catholic Women's Club of North Quincy, and the ladies in my club are a lot older, and you get feedback and sharing concerns, and just throughout the community because pretty active in different circles and the same things seem to come up and about like affordable housing for the elderly and medical you know care and services and with Quincy Medical Center um, the changes over the years and, and and the elderly population growing which is great you know and you don't want to have to go so far so um, I'm hoping for like in the square which was mentioned for an elderly medical facility and then I would like to see, you know, if, if everyone else agrees, um, the St. Mary Maternity Hospital at um, uh, in the it's a very long day. No, 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 Hospital Hill. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so for women, children, and babies, and then one for substance issues of all ages. Um, you know, because it's each one is a different specialty, so you need it all in one area, not like all disconnected. And I know we have a lot of growing medical services here, but if you kind of, you know, isolate it and, you know, make sense, and then it'll fit the neighborhood that it's in, and, you know, the transportation, the elderly usually has transportation, so you're not having, like, so many single cars, you know, with the younger demographics, it's, you know, you pick them up, you know, that type of thing. Yeah, a lot of folks can say, you know, I was born at Quincy City Hospital. And I was born uh, yeah. at Quincy. There you go. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but ever since uh, that stopped, um, mm. it's kind of lost that connection to the community, you know, I think. Um, so whether or not it comes back, well, that, that will remains to be seen. But you ran for at-large counselor. Right. So did you learn <coughs> anything about the city, Joanne, that you didn't know before you ran? Um, well... I knew a lot about the city, what's going on, because I follow QA TV and I follow the issues. Of course. And Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> and that just compelled me to, you know, run to, to get involved and see if I could help out with resolving some of the issues. And, and I did. I mean, I went to uh, Dorchester and Bill Harris was behind me and we spoke against the Long Island mm -hmm. Bridge. Mm -hmm. And then I became more um, part of FRAC and I went you know, and I wrote and went to the rallies, and it just seems like since my son went to college, it, I got compelled to get more involved. Okay. Because it was like, that was my whole life, sure. is, you know, taking care of the family, which I love, but now it's like, my, my daughter's like, now, get right? yourself yeah. involved. You always said if you had time for this, time for that, and it yeah. kind of pulled me in that direction, okay. but it's an overwhelming process, so yes. it's one that you won't forget, sure. but, but, you know, you've learned a lot from it that, people kind of tell you and you've heard it but until you're in it you really can't grasp yeah. how an immense project it is yeah well good for you do, for trying good for you for trying and yeah, thank you so for thank participating you. here at QA TV and chatting with the community we really appreciate it thank great you. to see you tonight Joanne you too. thank All you right. Joanne. thank you <laughs> bye bye Joanne Sullivan a candidate for at large counselor and uh, the the uh, guests are lining up uh, outside our door, <laughs> waiting to come in and chat with folks. Do I need to go on? For some numbers my, uh, to come in as we, uh, as we do that as well. And we'll bring them to you, of course, just as, as soon as they become available. We should mention, uh, and again, uh, this is, uh, we should mention it more than once during the uh, evening's uh, uh, broadcast, is the reliance we have on our members, our volunteers that are working in all facets of production tonight. No question, yeah. And Joanne mentioned uh, some of the candidates' forums and, and candidates' nights and a lot of our... Uh, uh, members and volunteers and staff um, went and videotaped a lot of those different meetings uh, to bring them to our viewers uh, throughout the campaign. Uh, also via our website as well. They've been posted there along with all the candidates' messages too. Uh, so we thank all the volunteers for going out and uh, you know late nights, uh, uh, weekends sometimes, uh, giving up their own personal time to do that uh, to bring the information to the community. It's just great. We should mention that uh, joining us right now is the current Ward 3 City Councilor. That would be Ian. Ian Kane. Ian, welcome. Good evening. Hi, Ian. How are you guys doing? Good. Good to see you. How good are you doing? You guys. I'm okay. I caught a bug last night, so I've been suffering a little today, but I feel pretty good. Oh, so it's great <laughs> to see you. Yeah, <laughs> right now. You guys stay far <laughs> on that side. I just had to come down and say hello because I love the service that you provide here oh, on great. election night. So, thank you. Thank, uh, you. thank you for having me. Appreciate that. You're seeking your, this will, this will be your third two-year term, is that right? This will be my third two-year term. Wow. Yep. Second uh, bout for re-election. Okay. Okay. How was the campaign this time different than, say, when you first ran, Ian? Uh, Yes. Yeah. So the first time we ran, there was an open seat. Yep. So there were three of us that came out. 
Um, that was, you know, one of the most engaging periods in my life, and not that any election isn't, but this was different. We had, um, I did have an opponent, um, didn't know much about him, uh, so I, you know, can't really speak to uh, what he was out doing, but, um, you know, I kind of, and we had talked on mm -hmm. Ann Quincy, I, I kept business as usual. Um, you know, it was nice to go out and see folks and check back in along the campaign trail, but, um, you know, we've, we've started some initiatives that have really allowed me to connect with folks in a, in a more efficient manner. Yeah. Uh, through our, you know, quarterly town hall meetings, and I'm getting out a quarterly newsletter and I've got people calling me and emailing me all the time so I you know feel very connected to my constituents if you could uh, just address a recent press conference and municipal broadband yeah absolutely um, this is a super exciting initiative uh, for me uh, I've been working with the mayor uh, and his administration on this so I think in February 2018 um, a little before then, I'd started reading about cities and towns who were coming up with their own solutions to alleviate the problem of being choked by um, monopolies in internet service deliverability. So I said, why don't we take a look into uh, building a municipally owned fiber network for the city uh, that you know we can then allow different internet service providers to compete on, which would then you know hopefully bring the cost down. Uh, you know we've got people paying hundreds of dollars right now for uh, basic internet. I know yeah. I pay $110 a month just for internet for probably like 250 bits, um, you know, but this would hopefully, um, I'm not answering your question, I'm going to go back. So the conference we had was announcing this initiative going forward. So uh, the mayor's been very supportive uh, in this initiative, and so now is the first uh, bit of the public process. So uh, this is a project that won't go anywhere without the support of the people, and these are things that I've heard for the past uh, four years mm -hmm. that, you know, people feel like they want choices, they want their internet costs to go down, and it's a, you know, and it's, an, it's an essential thing now. I think people take for granted that that um, internet is something that you use in your daily lives, yeah. and it is now like electricity. It is now like water, um, and we're, it's something we're using it right now. Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, you know, we had the we had the conference and uh, the press conference, and now we're asking folks to go to www.quincyfiber.com um, to share their interest in um, our pursuing this initiative. Any kind of cost estimate or how funding would be applied for that, Ian? So no cost estimate okay. yet, but uh, basically how it's financed yeah. is on the commitment of subscribers. Okay. It's basically like uh, constructing a gas line to your home, so uh. it becomes part of your property. Okay. Yeah. So it might be some sort of overhead cost of $20 a month, uh, which would be paid off over, mm -hmm. you know, let's say 20 years or so. Um, and then hopefully we have a number of internet service providers that come in and so you have access to, uh, to cheap internet. So what this is really doing is separating the internet service deliverability model, right? So right now you've got the incumbents, which are the large Comcasts and the Verizons of the world who own the infrastructure mm. and so they do not allow for competition <laughs> to get on that line. Right. So we're just trying to, you know, create some opportunities to, to give better options for our residents. It's already taken uh, interest uh, from uh, folks in Weymouth, as I understand uh, it. Weymouth and Milton. And Milton too. Yeah, okay. Weymouth and Milton. All so right. um, we might try to figure out, I know the mayor had some initial conversations with the mayor of, um, of Weymouth. Yes. And um, I know uh, Milton is also interested, so we'll have to see how something like that would work out. But um, you know, it's an exciting initiative. Yeah. This is this is forward thinking. This is putting Quincy in a place to uh, to compete. You know, we look at uh, all the real estate development that's kind of taking place, but now this is let's let's think of Quincy as a more innovative place, a place that you'd want to have a business because you have uh, good access to cheap and fast internet. You know, that can help you participate in this digital economy. All right. I want to thank you for joining us today, even though you're slightly under yeah, the weather. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks yeah. for uh, no, stopping by. Thank you for having me. A pleasure. Yeah. Good Lots night. of liquids and plenty of sleep. I know. I've got Pedialyte in the car. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know how to take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Thanks, Ian. <laughs> thank you. Good to see you. <laughs> that's uh, Ian Kane, the incumbent Ward 3 counselor. And as he mentioned, uh, uh, there is a challenger also uh, in uh, Roberto Soto. And uh, we don't know if he'll be stopping by or not. But if he does, we'd be happy to chat with him. Certainly. And that's what makes this program such a success. Absolutely. Because we have so many guests join us for election night coverage, which, of course, again, we welcome greatly. One thing that will be happening uh, this evening is that there will be a new Ward 5 uh, city councilor because the incumbent Kirsten Hughes has decided to uh, step down. Uh, she was first elected, I think, back in 2012. Uh, so there are, are two candidates in the running. And one of them might be a little familiar to folks in Ward 5 uh, because he held that seat uh, for, gosh, 10, 12 years or so. Uh, Chuck Phelan, who's stopping by now to chat with us. Hey, Chuck. Hey. Joe. Get your City of Quincy tie on it. Yeah, I got my City of Quincy. <laughs> this, is actually and, my, this, and. Is, this is actually my dad's tie. Oh, it is. So I, he was my first real campaign manager, and uh, and he passed away a couple of years ago, so I wanted to remember him. Very because nice. he was very into the, he was a Quincy policeman for 35 years, and he was very into the political life in the city. Sure. 
So I kind of wear it in his memory. Nice. And it's, it's kind of nice. When Joe introduced you, he introduced you as the former yep. Ward 5 counselor. What made you decide to get back in the race? I think there's an incredible thing of service with my family, going all the way back to my great-grandfather, who was a who was a sergeant on the Quincy Police. My grandfather was a lieutenant on the Quincy Fire. My father was a longtime policeman. And they, the family's been in the city almost five generations. And I, I, had, I had worked for the city for a while. I had been away. When my son was born, I decided to step off the city council to take care of my family. And I'm retired now, and I see some issues going on around Ward 5 that I think I could really be there and help and bring some resolution to, and, and I think I'd, I'd be able to really help the situation. And I, I, I'm very, I've always wanted to serve the city. I enjoyed when I was a city council before, and there seems there's some issues with development. There's some issues with Wallace and Center that need some redevelopment, that need some, some TLC. And I think um, I've done it for a number of years, and I, I, my, I own a business with my wife in Wallaston. And I think there's a lot of issues around in the neighborhood, and I, they, they need some representation. And I, I feel very strongly I can deliver that for them. We'll talk about Wollaston Center. There is a brand new uh, MBTA Wollaston Station. Station. Yeah. So talk about what you feel is needed, what folks have been telling you is well, needed I, in I the downtown. I think you have areas like the Wollaston Theater, which is an area ripe for development. There's been a proposal over where, the old, where Coy is right now, where the old Barry's Deli was, and they're between there and Newcomb Farms. And I want to see something that goes in that's good for the neighborhood, not a detriment to the neighborhood. I, there's going to be some development, and I want to see something go in that's good. In, and it's the same way with Quincy, Quincy Hospital. We have Quincy Hospital. That's another issue, which will be Thursday night at the planning board. Yep, that's and in I, your ward, correct? Yeah, and I will be going whether I, whether it turns out good or not tonight. I, I believe that's been postponed, actually. Has it? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I think I think those are issues where I think some experience as a city councilor really can lend itself, and to try to work with the neighborhood to come to some resolves on that because I think the development up in, especially up in the hospital, is too big. I don't think it fits with the neighborhood, mm. and I think. Um, a counselor can be a little proactive, get involved with these people, meet with them beforehand, and try to get the project so it's more compatible with the neighborhood. So you think housing, though, is, is a, a possibility up there? Just a, Oh, just yeah, I think, I think yeah. something's going to be built up there. Yeah. And, I, and then the one thing is the neighborhood up there all feels that way, too. Oh, okay. And, I, I, you know, and then I take it, and then we go to the other side of the city down in Wallace and Center, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think we're working at the same thing. I like what the city's done. They, we did a nice planning meeting where almost 100 people showed up from the neighborhood to talk about what you want to see in Wallaston. The planning department put out uh, surveys that they're going through right now. And I think it's important that we make the area, keep it a retail area. Mm -hmm. There can be housing above. Mm -hmm. But I think there has to be things that make it, make it a, something that really works for the neighborhood, not something that works against the neighborhood. And with that thought, traffic and working with TPAL, the traffic uh, alarm lighting division in the city? I think that's a big thing. That's going to be a lot. And I think when somebody comes in to do development, if they're going to be affecting it, they should be helping with the solution. Mm -hmm. Whether it's fixing signals, not a year after the development goes in, but before the development takes place, before the impacts are felt. So I think some of those things should be brought into play before we even build build the thing and put it in. We should mention that parking is also part of that department yes. as well. Par <laughs> parking, and it, that's something, if you're going to be going into Wallace and Center and you're going to be doing a, a development, parking is an issue. It's been an issue for a long time in Wallace and Center. I remember going to a, a charrette back in the early 80s, mm -hmm. run by then late Steve McGrath, who was a Ward 5 council, a good friend of mine, who w was saying one of the biggest issues in Wallace is parking. And you can go there today, and it's the same. It's the same, yeah. And I think, I think there are some creative solutions. I think we have to work with the developers, work with the neighborhood, and come up with a solution on it. And I think that these are, Quincy has more traffic. Because if you look at the census, our population's gone up 25%. And We're going to find that out next, next year with the federal census. And there are more, yeah. I, and I definitely, and having help 
get the information because you do it two years in advance. Right. And before I left, I helped to get all that information to the federal census. Yeah, and you, of course, the IT director in the and, city, and so and you have to compilate so, that. Yeah. So I think there is that. But I think we need to work on better controls throughout the city. Mm. I think there's a lot of things we can work on, encourage transportation, um, you know, new developments going in, in the hospital. And they hadn't even thought to put a shuttle bus in, where other developments on Quarry Street and down, down Marina Bay had put shuttle buses in, take people right to the T. And I think if you don't give people opportunities to make it easy for them, they won't use them. All right. On that note, we're okay. going to send you along. I think I you. could go on forever. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to go on forever, Joe, and I'll come by your show and we can talk about it more. I'll I can come by regardless, John. Yeah, I, I would love to. Thank Good you, John. You. Okay, thank you. We do have a few numbers that are uh, coming into our studio uh, now uh, that we can uh, bring to you first in the uh, in the mayor's race. And uh, right now the incumbent mayor, Thomas Koch, with 4,288 votes and challenger Brenda Ryan at 1,742 votes. And we'll switch now to the uh, races for at-large councillor and incumbent Noel DeBona right now at 4,540 votes. Nina Liang, another incumbent at 3,830 votes. And the third incumbent up for re-election tonight, Ann Mahoney, 4,041 votes. There are two challengers also, Frank Rubino, 1,197 votes. And Joanne Sullivan Cantor at 958 votes. We should mention that we do have another candidate uh, joining us, a candidate for the Ward 6 council seat, William Eisenberg. It's nice Pleasure. to see you again. How are you? How are you? I'm very well, thanks. <laughs> Tired, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I'm relieved too. Uh, we had a great campaign. Um, I'm really proud of, of the work that we did and uh, all of our volunteers did, uh, you know, did put so much effort in. Um, so I'm, you know, no matter what happens tonight, I'm, I'm happy. And what got you into the campaign? What got you interested in running? So, you know, there was the, uh, the storm in 2018, the March 2018 Nor'easter, where so many of our neighbors uh, suffered such significant damage. My neighbor lost her car, things like that. Um, in the wake of it, I was concerned that uh, there wasn't leadership uh, on the city council coming from Ward 6, both um, dealing with flood mitigation and also uh, prevention, you know, future prevention. So that was the impetus for me to run. Um, and uh, a lot of people seem to share that view uh, as, I, as I went out in the community and talked to folks. Uh, so um, that, that was, you know, sort of the, the uh, rallying cry that we, we built the campaign around. And um, I guess we'll see. <laughs> And one of the things I noticed that, that uh, you were interested in is having all the stakeholders represented at every level of planning. Yes. So right now, I think there is a power imbalance in the city. I, I, I don't think many people would disagree with that, quite frankly. I think right now, when it comes to development, the, um, the large construction firms and the uh, uh, developers have a lot of say and basically get to do what they want. I, I think we need a more holistic development policy, and I think we need one, frankly, that centers both on Quincy residents, you know, folks who are uh, seeing uh, more and more traffic, you know, the, seeing the deposit bridge backed up more and more every day. Uh, folks who are worried that um, they're not going to be able to stay in their neighborhoods, you know, people who've lived here their entire lives who um, uh, feel like they're getting priced out. Uh, and also labor and trades people. Um, you know, right now I don't think that uh, the people who are actually building these buildings really have much of a seat at the table. You know, I think we should be doing things like talking about project labor agreements to make sure that uh, the people who are actually doing this work are getting a, a fair day's pay for an honest day's work. So that was a, another uh, a major priority of mine and, and one that I, I hope to be able to uh, uh, enact. Regardless of uh, what happens this evening, do you feel that you maybe have brought an issue to the fore that perhaps wasn't in the past? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. And, you know, I had, um, there are some moments that I'm really proud of. You know, when I was out talking to people, um, two people told me that uh, they had both recently become citizens in their first vote that they were going to cast, they were going to cast for me. And I, I can't imagine a greater honor. Mm. That's a positive. Uh, yeah. Very um, much. So I, you know, I, I um, whatever happens, yeah, I, I, you know, I, I we, uh, my opponent and I had a series of debates in the community. We created a clear contrast between the two of us, um, and I think we gave people a choice, and that's what democracy is all about, and that's that's what I wanted to do. And where do you stand on the Long Island Bridge? <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so thank you for asking. So I, um, I'm a public defender. People with uh, substance use disorder is my service population. 
Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time trying to help folks find beds and things like that. The idea of taking a bunch of people and ostracizing them on an island was old fashioned in the 1980s. Uh, I'm, I'm deeply opposed, you know, not only to the execution, but the concept. Uh, Boston has some really excellent treatment programs. I've worked with many of them for a fraction of the cost of what Boston wants to do with regards to the bridge and to Long Island. They could fund beds, you know, enough beds to deal with everyone who's suffering from substance use disorder, not in five or ten years, but today. So I've always been opposed to the construction of the bridge. I continue to be opposed to construction of the bridge. And what I told people was, you know, it's not a political fight. Uh, because Mayor Walsh has his ducks in the row, and, and he doesn't care what we want in Quincy. He doesn't care what the councilman wants, and frankly, he doesn't care what Mayor Koch wants. This is a legal fight. This is happening in a courtroom. And, you know, the, the city of Quincy has a lawsuit against uh, Boston. That lawsuit has been allowed to proceed. It's going to be tied up in litigation for a number of years. And, you know, what I told people was the value I had as a lawyer is that I can actually talk strategy with the other, with the legal team and, and with the law department. And, um, you know, I, I think that's where this fight is going to be. So that's the, that's the skill that I can provide. Well, we want to thank you for uh, participating in, uh, in our uh, efforts here at Quincy Access Television to get your uh, information out to the, uh, to the community. Uh, it, helps, it helps us you know, with the local programming as well when the community, like yourself, gets involved. Well, thank you so much. I, it's been a pleasure. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for stopping by. We that should mention that we uh, still yes. uh, do have uh, numbers that uh, we will be uh, telling you about as they run at the bottom of your screen. I believe we stopped uh, last with the counselor at large post. Uh, possibly we could go over some ward numbers that are in. Sure, absolutely. We can do that. As a matter of fact, uh, speaking of Ward 6, uh, we will let you know that with 18 precincts in, the incumbent William Harris has 1,537 votes and challenger William Eisenberg now at 671 votes. In uh, Ward 5, we just had uh, Chuck Phelan in. We'll tell you that uh, Stephen Christo is in the in lead right now at 171 votes compared to uh, Chuck Phelan at 115 votes. These are, uh, again, with 19 precincts reporting in uh, right now. Uh, ward 4, of course, Brian Palmucci is unopposed um, this evening. Uh, he, along with uh, Ward 2 Councilor Brad Kroll, are also uh, unopposed. Uh, but in Ward 3, the incumbent Ian Kane at 1,358 and Eriberto Soto at 407 votes. Again, these are with uh, 19 precincts reporting in so far. There are also uh, four candidates for three school committee seats uh, this evening. And uh, another thing that will be happening tonight, we'll be having at least one new school committee member Correct. because uh, James Dimitius is not seeking uh, re-election. But we do have uh, to tell you Paul Bergoli, incumbent with 5,107 votes. Incumbent Catherine Hubley, 5,459 votes. Uh, and then challengers uh, Courtney Pertios at 3,885, and then uh, Frank Santoro at 3,930, and that's again with uh, 19 precincts reporting in so far. Joining us again, another guest has joined us at the, uh, I was going to say round table. This is more of a rectangle. Kind of a rectangle. Kind of an egg uh, no, I table. Know, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's not a rectangle. No. Uh, joining uh, us right now, actually, is a candidate for re-election, a counselor at large. That would be Nina Liang. Nina, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I didn't break anything coming in tonight. So. No, and you probably <laughs> so know your shapes better start. than me. This yeah. is a triangle, isn't it, of it's some sort? It's certainly not round, but <laughs> A for effort. So okay. It's been a long day for all of us, I think. <laughs> so talk about the campaign. Uh, talk about today, I suppose, being the last day of the campaign. Yeah, I can't believe it's already over. Um, to, you know, believe it or not, it's, I think, definitely a tough one for a lot of folks, not just the candidates, but also every single one of the volunteers who have been part of the process, um, you know, throughout the entire campaign for, I think, all of the candidates, and especially tonight, you know, going around talking to even just the poll workers, you know, who were up and at the polls at 6, 6.15 this morning, and who closed the polls tonight, you know? I mean, this is an effort of everybody here in the city, and um, it certainly feels long, I think, throughout the afternoon, but you get that burst of energy, you get people coming out to vote, um, and I think we're all out for the right reasons, and so seeing everyone out like that, um, either holding a sign, making phone calls, um, running and working the polls, you know, that, I think, is what really keeps you going. You're seeking your third two-year term, right? Can you believe it? Yeah, yeah. 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 So. Um, I'd like to ask uh, incumbents this question, you know, how, First of all, how have you changed as a as an elected official, and how have you seen the city change uh, since you first took office? Yeah, I can't believe it's um, already been the end of two terms. It's really strange to think about, but I think one of the things that hasn't changed is that I keep being told that I need to slow down when I talk, <laughs> but, you know, that's something I'm working on. I get really excited sometimes about uh, certain issues across our city, and so that is something I need to continue okay. to work on. Um, certainly, you know, I think 
the demographics of the city always continue to change and what I'm seeing more is that regardless of again what neighborhood people come from how long they lived in the city, what language they speak, they are getting more active and more vocal about the issues that they're facing in this city. So it could be something like, hey, you know, the development over in this other neighborhood is impacting traffic in my neighborhood. Or, you know, the streets are getting done over, that's great, but what about over here where the sidewalk isn't done yet, mm -hmm. you know? And, you know, they're getting more active in planning board meetings, they're getting more active in zoning board meetings. And so while it's a great opportunity to be one of the counselors that can, you know, really stand up and speak for residents who maybe can't make it out to meetings or for whatever reason can't come and, and speak for themselves, I'm seeing a lot more engagement from residents themselves, which is a really incredible thing. Mm. And during the campaign, this campaign, what was the one topic or maybe a couple topics that kept on repeating as you went from house to house? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a few that I think has been consistent over the last four years. You know, development is definitely one of them, um, but it's not just saying development, right? Smart you're you're talking, exactly, you're talking a lot about the particulars of development, right? Where is that happening? How high are these buildings going up? In what neighborhoods are they going up? Are we developing in the right areas, right? People want to see the sort of hustle and bustle of more retail definitely come online. Offsetting, you know, our residential tax base with more commercial is certainly something we all want to see happen. It's more of a concern of where is that happening? You know, making sure that our neighborhoods are being protected and that development's happening in the right areas and promoting, like you said, smart development for those reasons, right? Making sure that the traffic impact is really studied fully and vetted fully before developments come online. How are people getting from point A to point B? A lot of these developments say, you don't need a car, you don't need a parking spot. All right, well, there's Uber, there's Lyft, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. the MBTA is not the most reliable. And so it's, again, not just development, period. It's what about development is the issue because we do need to get into the nitty gritty and making sure that we're addressing those specific issues. And of course, as a counselor at large, you get to deal with all of that all across the city. And uh, it's, a, it's really very much a city of different neighborhoods. You know, it even is. though it's a city of 100,000 people, it's a, it's, it's a major metropolitan area. It still comes down to neighborhoods and, and then small, you know, streets and, and districts and, and concerns to those people in general. And you get to see all that in different parts of the city. That's my favorite part of the city, <laughs> honestly. Really? I mean, yeah. regardless of what neighborhood you go to, regardless of what part of the city you go to, you mm -hmm. guys know this, the different neighborhood associations, the different group mm -hmm. of residents that come out and get active and hold little events and, you know, invite people out to really get to know their neighbors. And that is the strength of the city. Our those different neighborhoods but everyone's taking notice right they're not fighting just to protect their neighborhood they're fighting to protect what happens across the city because it impacts their neighborhood you know and I love being able to go and reach every corner of the city and have those conversations with those folks talk to them one-to-one -one about their concerns and continue to fight for them on the council and so I know the um, unofficial results are in I'm yes. waiting for the official ones you never know until it's over not so taking it for granted then, exactly right? you can't yeah. okay. you really can't you know and um, it's a long process but I'm really excited and hopefully I'll be able to continue to serve well, thanks for taking part in our coverage here, Nina, and thanks for participating at QATV throughout the year. It's great. Of course. You guys are awesome. Thank you oh. so much for doing this. Thank I really you. look forward to Thank it every you. night. So I appreciate it. Now, don't drop anything on the way out. I will do my best. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we removed that panel that seems to fall every time. I appreciate right. that. You removed it just because you knew I was coming. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Have Have a good good night. Thank you, guys. Good night. Bye-bye. Nina Lane, Councilor at Large, and uh, we can run down the At Large Council numbers for you again if, you, if you'd uh, like to see those. 25 precincts reporting in now, and in the uh, race for At Large uh, Councilor, Noel DeBona at 7,936 right now, Nina Lang at 6,834, and Mahoney at 7,071, and then the uh, two challengers, Frank Rubino at 2,292, and a Joanne Sullivan Cantor at 1,757. Again, don't forget these are unofficial uh, numbers that we're bringing to you right now. And the race for a mayor, incumbent uh, Thomas Koch, 7,572. Challenger Brenda Ryan at 3,182. And again, that's uh, 25 of 31 precincts reporting in so far. Thanks to all of our great volunteers that are phoning these in and, and to our folks answering the phones downstairs, getting them up to us. It takes so many people to uh, put a show like this together, and um, certainly you at home see the two of us, but there are so many people behind the scenes. Absolutely, there's no question. And uh, our next guest, we want to welcome candidate for Ward 1 City Council seat. For the second time around, uh, Joe Murphy has stopped on by. And Joe, great to see you again. Great to see you guys. How are you? Doing well. How about Good. yourself? How are you? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah, how are you yeah. feeling after the day today? Oh, I'm exhausted. You look a little tired. <laughs> yeah, <actually. laughs> it's been a long day. Yeah. But um, it was great. We had a yeah. great time um, out with the volunteers today. It was just a lot of fun. Um, I have a, such a fun crew, and we were out there, and we uh, 
set up tents and we had lights and music and snacks. It really? was fun. Yeah. Oh. And talk about what got you into the race again. What uh, what was the driving issue or issues that uh, made you want to compete? Disappointment. Um, I uh, I think what I kept hearing from my neighbors and con and fellow Ward Oneers is um, just disappointment with how it was going. Um, they felt that there was no urgency to some of the infrastructure problems we were seeing. Um, they felt they weren't getting represented. They felt there was a lack of communication. Um, they felt um, very strongly that um, what was happening was our, our counselor was kind of representing uh, the mayor's interest in Ward 1 rather than Ward 1's interest at City Hall. Hmm. Um, based off the results, there are a lot of people who don't agree, but um, that's what got me in, yeah. Talk about your environmental uh, policy and the green zoning task force. Yeah, well, um, uh, building practices are one of the major um, contributors to greenhouse gases. And I like to look at different ways to approach the environmental problem um, that are a little more palatable to people. So with the Green Zoning Task Force, we can um, modernize and green some of our, z our zoning and building practices to the point where we're being good citizens of the earth, meaning we're doing things that help the environment, lower GHGs. Um, we're doing things that are good for the builders because the task force will be half uh, tradespeople, builders who, you know, can work with the environmental people to find practices that not just work for the environmental people, but work for the builders. And with the combination of savings and efficiency and the builders having a good say on how we can do things that work for them, we can save people money when they, in their monthly utility bills and in their housing, uh, the cost of doing the work. So. So if you can do all those things and be a good citizen of the world environmentally, it just makes sense. Do you agree with the kind of the you know quick short-term approach right now though of, uh, of increasing the height of the seawalls and improving the drainage just for kind of a short-term fix well, to the coastal flooding problem? Yeah, and unfortunately we, we can't do this without short-term fixes yeah. because we could have another bad storm next week. Right. So we, uh, we need to expedite those projects and we need to get those seawalls built, but if we're thinking that that'll be it and that we don't have to think about what's next, you know, then we're handing, kicking the problem down to the next generation, which is what uh, the previous generations did to us. Mm. And also uh, the MBTA trains, but specifically buses from Ward 1. Yeah. Well, m I, I, I would love to take the buses um, home myself. The reason I can't is because they run so infrequently. And like on the weekend, if I wanted to take a bus um, to my house, like from like a day in Boston or something, I would have to go through Germantown first before I get the house. Next. What we need to do is just run more frequently and uh, run, run directly. And if we do that, you're gonna increase ridership, which will make it uh, revenue. It'll, the revenue will work for the MBTA as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm all for public transportation. We need it. Uh, the, the congestion in Quincy and everywhere in this country right now is, is getting to the point where um, gridlock is everywhere. Um, people's lives, w we've become so used to it that we don't even realize how miserable it is. You know, I mean, right now, there are days I'm sitting at my desk at work that I almost don't want to leave because I don't want to get on the tee, you know? And so it's like <laughs> some master conspiracy to keep me at work, you know? <laughs> Would you run again, Joe? Uh, oh, of course, I'm, I'm definitely gonna run again at some point. I don't know if I'd run for Ward 1 okay. again. I think uh, I've given Ward 1 um, the option and choice this time around, and so I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. And um, I've put out a lot of ideas, and uh, you know, and I think I let people send a message to Councilor McCarthy that you know, they, they want a little more. And so I'm happy about that. So I don't know what's going to be next, but I'll definitely be running again. Okay. Yeah. Well, please uh, thank you first, first of all, for utilizing QA TV to get your message out, and please uh, consider an open invitation in the future. Always. Great. Thank yes. you. Continue to utilize Quincy Access Television. I will. Please. Yeah.
And Thank tell you. all your friends and neighbors. I will. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Joe. Good to talk to Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> we do have uh, 29 of 31 precincts uh, in now for unofficial uh, election results to bring to you. And, uh, well, we'll start with Ward 1, seeing as we just chatted with one of the candidates. Incumbent Dave McCarthy right now at 1,955 votes. And uh, Joe Murphy at 1,005 votes. Again, 29 of 31 precincts in. Uh, Ward 2, of course, Brad Kroll is unopposed. He uh, is earning 1,489 votes right now. In the uh, race for Ward 3, incumbent Ian Kane, 1,514. Challenger, Eriberto Soto at 486. Uh, Ward 4, Councilor Brian Pellucci is also unopposed uh, this evening. He has 1,450 votes right now. In the race for the open uh, seat in Ward 5, uh, Stephen Christo is uh, right now 1,086 votes, and Charles Phelan just disappeared off my screen <laughs> at 1,372. So right now, Charles Phelan in the lead. That's a close one. We'll have to watch that in Ward 5. This is a 29 of 31 precincts coming in right now. And Ward 6, the incumbent, uh, Bill Harris at 1,766. Challenger, uh, William Eisenberg at 833. These touchy computer screens. <laughs> Sorry <laughs> about big that. fingers there, Mark. <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, well, we have another guest uh, joining us in studio. She is a candidate uh, for re-election for counselor at large. Uh, we're joined by Ann Mahoney. Ann, welcome. Well, hello, guys. How are you? Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back. I know. I'm very <laughs> excited to be back. Yeah, it was, it was a long, strange day. Cold, raw. Oh, weather-wise, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How yeah. about, about campaign-wise? Campaign-wise, it was, it was, you know, as always, it's, it's no matter what, no matter how hard you work when the election day is here, you just hope you did enough to make sure that um, that you can pull off that. And they just, you know, one, two, or three didn't matter. I, I was, I was, you know, well, everybody wants to be one, but I said, you know, I, I, was, I was the opposite, saying, listen, I, you know, if you're third, you're still a counselor at large. So there's three seats, and I just wanted one of them. And I'm very proud to say that we did a great job, and and I'm very happy. I don't even know what the final results are, so I just know that I'm I'm one of them. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talk about uh, as you were out and about this mm -hmm. campaign uh, mm -hmm. season. Yeah. Uh, what what were the issues that um, you just heard time and time again? Yeah. So people are just very concerned about the fact that there's so much overdevelopment in the city of Quincy, and they really do feel like their neighborhoods are not being heard. They can go to planning me board meetings. They can go to anything, and they're being talked to, not asked. They're being, you know, they're being told, and they're not being heard. And that's a big problem in the city of Quincy. And it's it's really it, it's appearing that the developers have control of our city, and people are just not happy with that. And the other thing that comes hand in hand with that is the traffic that goes along with the city. And you know we can only say so many times to people that it's cut through traffic when you're seeing the developers over time being told yes and their peer reviews being passed on, city departments basically approving them to suspect traffic plans that are coming into the city and then excusing it by saying that it's cut through traffic that's causing our problems. We actually have to start owning our problems in the city of Quincy or else we're not going to be able to really manage the things that we want. Talk about the public meeting requirement. Mm -hmm. The public. What do you mean by the public meeting? Well, I guess in regards to developers. So, so developers have. So there's a. So th it's up to the ward councilors to actually have the public meetings. When a developer comes into the ward, it works with the developer. It, it, a developer would work with the ward, the ward um, person, um, and then actually they would have a public meeting if they need a variance or if they need if they need anything to let people know. But there's been in some situations, like in Ward Five, where there wasn't the public meetings that were happening and things were happening and being approved, or even with traffic, where you know they were sidestepping the public hearings to allow traffic changes that were potentially being changed, and those things can't happen. So we have a lot of really great ward councilors, and in this particular case, you know, th there's a new ward councilor that's going to come in for Ward Five, and, and I think that ward's looking for representation. I think that's a that's really the theme throughout the whole city is people are looking for their representatives to do their jobs, and they're looking for the people who work for the city that get paid by our tax dollars to also do their jobs. And there's a it's a real it's it's it, they're looking for that leadership to actually if the departments aren't doing it to make sure that they get in line to do it, and that's across the board from you know from trees to streets to everything it's not saying that people are not doing a good job it's just making sure the communication is happening and not being told uh, you know to use an example for streets not being told your street could be done this summer that's not really a timeline we really want to know like when is it going to happen in our area and, and how is it going to happen and when it comes to development what's going to happen and what are our what's what's what uh, what can we do as residents to lessen that impact and if you're working to try to lessen that impact and you've organized, you should be, you should be heard. And a perfect example of that is Hospital Hill. 
Mm -hmm. Do you think there maybe need to be, and it's interesting you say this mm -hmm. because this is not just a Quincy issue, this is happening, no, it's uh, happening in the greater everywhere. Boston yeah. area. Yeah. That's why I said it's, it's not something that's uh, not isolated to just right. Quincy. But, but some fundamental zoning changes mm -hmm. to protect neighborhoods? No, I think absolutely. Okay. And I was very happy and very proud to support when Brad Kroll brought before the City Council the review of the zoning laws. And it's it's well overdue. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we actually ha we have an opportunity to be able to do that in the City of Quincy. And we have to demand that our planning board and our zoning board and our commissions that are giving out the variances are holding true to what we need here in Quincy and not just panning away mm. areas because we're so excited about the opportunity. I think we got, it's like kids in the candy store. You know, you get excited and you, you know, you get you get asked like, what do you think? Do you want box number one, box number two, or box number three? And you think <laughs> you're going to get something? Well, we need to actually control what the boxes are. Well, those boards are volunteer mostly. Do you think they mm -hmm. should be elective boards? No, I think I think if they're appointed, they should be appointed, and they should you know they're appointed by the mayor. But I yeah. think we but 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 when and if something's not happening, we need to make sure there's a checks and balance. I know that with the planning board, they weren't holding quorums, and I asked mm. to actually ex add to it that we have more than mm -hmm. more than one alternative uh, alternate to be on there, so that we can make sure that we don't have that mishap happening. People do get sick and people can't come to right. meetings, but it doesn't mean meetings shouldn't happen. And it shouldn't be bypassing developers because the state law, that's the loophole, the state law says that they can. But just because they can doesn't mean that the way we want to work here in Quincy. We really have to protect the residents' rights here in okay. the city of Quincy. By the way, you're number two, not number three. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm happy to be, I'm just happy to be on the council. How about that? I'm very Thanks. proud. And I really want to thank everybody on my committee. My committee, I always say we're strong, but we're powerful. <laughs> we just, we're, we, what we lack in numbers, we make up in steam. You know, we are, we work very, very very hard and I want to thank the union support that supported me but most importantly my parents my husband my kids Veronica Bertrand and I and a lot of great supporters that are out there I have had several great supporters that are out there that are there to support me from from they're very sick but they're supporting me from their, the sidelines voting for me and you know Mr. McGee on, mm. on, on Robinson Street I'm thinking about him and Janice Dvork I mean these are people who put their heart and souls into it even though they they couldn't be out there doing things but were really helping me along to get there so I thank everybody um, universally throughout the city of Quincy. I'm so proud to be elected and I'm so proud to be able to serve again and to ask the questions that I know need to be asked of the council. Well, we hope you continue to come back on AM Quincy Absolutely. and a conversation with mm -hmm. and uh, chat with both Joe and myself. You know I love to, so Thanks, yeah. whenever you want. Uh, and if you don't, I'll call you, okay? okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know my number. Thanks Thank again. you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, Mahoney, councillor at large, and as I mentioned, uh, placing number two now in uh, the race for the uh, three at large council seats. Uh, we'll run down those numbers for you. This is 31 of 31 precincts in right now. These are unofficial results. Uh, we'll start with uh, Noel de Bona at 9,675, Nina Lang at 8,377, and Mahoney, who we just chatted with, 8,686, and then the challengers, Frank Rubino at 2,880, and uh, Joanne Sullivan Cantor, 2,235. There was a race for mayor uh, this evening, you may be aware, and uh, we have the uh, Numbers for you right now with incumbent mayor Thomas Koch, 9,377 votes. Challenger Brenda Ryan at 3,902. Looks like the mayor will win another four-year term and become the longest-serving mayor in the city's history. On to the uh, race for the Ward 1 City Council seat now and incumbent Dave McCarthy at 1,955 and challenger Joe Murphy at 1,005. Again, unofficial results coming in uh, for you this evening. We'll move on to the uh, race for Ward 3 now and the incumbent Ian Kane, 1,514 and uh, challenger Eriberto Soto at 486. Looks like Ian will be re-elected uh, this evening. The race for the open Ward 5 uh, City Council seat now, Stephen Christo at 1,086 and Charles Phelan at 1,372. And the race for Ward 6, incumbent Bill Harris, 1,766, challenger William Eisenberg at 833. Moving on to the uh, at-large uh, council seats, uh, rather the school committee seats, pardon me, and incumbent Paul Brigoli, 8,000 votes, incumbent Catherine Hubley at 8,508, challenger Courtney Pertios at 5,990, and challenger Frank Santoro, 6,459. So it looks like Frank Santoro will fill the uh, seat left vacant by James Diamitius. Of course, Frank, former Quincy High principal, uh, school committee member, uh, longtime teacher, and uh, North, North Quincy native. <laughs> yes, yes. And I think we uh, noticed uh, this evening as we were bringing uh, our guests in that a lot of the same issues, well, that it really, What's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
every candidate seemed to have about the same issues, the, the, the topics, the development, the traffic. Yes, as I mentioned uh, when I was speaking with Ann, uh, saw an interview with the Secretary of State, uh, Bill Galvin, just last night, and he has talked to city clerks and election officials all over Massachusetts, and that has been an overriding theme throughout the state, is uh, development, is zoning, is traffic, is, is growth and, and economic um, disparity. So it's not just here in Quincy, um, and a lot of different communities are grappling with how to deal with this um, also. Um, whether or not that's a comfort uh, to folks who have concerns about that, I don't know, but um, it, is, it is not just in Quincy. We should mention that uh, for a while, the downtown uh, Quincy Center uh, was really stagnant. Mm -hmm, there wasn't so. uh, anything going on there. Now that's totally changed. Yeah, and folks that we talked to at the polls, um, kind of approved of having density in the downtown area. One woman said to us, I, I like what's going on downtown. Um, you know, that's where it should stay. And, and I think that's kind of the feeling of a lot of folks. They don't want to lose the character of their neighborhoods to overdevelopment. Um, speaking of at the polls. We have a piece that uh, we had uh, previewed earlier in the evening. Uh, Joe and I were at the polls. Oh, what about uh, 11 o'clock uh, this morning? Yes. And uh, we did speak to uh, some voters. We did speak to City Clerk Nicole Crispo, and uh, we will have all of that for you in just a moment, and then we will be back here to close this evening's coverage of Quincy Votes. With uh, City Clerk uh, Nicole Crispo here at the Adams Academy, Ward 5, Precinct 3, to get an update on how voting's going in today's citywide election. Nicole, how's things going so far? Hi, Joe. Um, thank you for having me. Things are going well. Um, the um, people are out voting. 5% have come out so far. Um, we're up about 25% from the preliminary. Is that about what you anticipated? It is. So um, I think there'll be probably another rush at the lunch hour and then after dinner, of course. I know that uh, earlier you'd anticipated a total about 30, 35 percent uh, citywide. Are you still going to stick to that, do you think? Uh, I'm hoping so, yeah. absolutely, yes. Um, we, we've seen a lot of um, big numbers in Ward 5, 6-5, um, and in 1 as well. Of course, there's an open seat uh, for this time around uh, right. in that ward, so yeah, there's a, there's a pretty even race, I guess, between the two candidates for that right now, yeah. yeah. Uh, for folks who are maybe voting for the first time, Nikki, uh, what are some of the considerations, you know, if they find they go to the polls and they don't have their name on the voting list or, or, or there's another issue like that, what are some of the things that they should be concerned about? Um, certainly, uh, we send out an acknowledgement notice for everybody that's a registered voter in our city. You know, if you still have that, bring it with you. Um, call our office 617-376-1144 somebody will answer the phones always there to help um, you can go on to our city website at um, quincyma.gov and go to city clerk's page in elections and it'll lead you to um, the secretary of state's website where you can go on to see where you're registered to vote it was, I know, a little bit of confusion about uh, early voting. Some folks thought that it might be taking place at this particular election, but that's not the case, right? No, no early voting for this election. There will be at least five days of early voting for March presidential primary. Yeah, that's going to be a busy one, of course. It uh, certainly is. Not yeah. only here. Uh, uh, Volunteer-wise at the polls, poll workers, how are you staffed this year? We're doing very well. Um, we actually got 20 three new poll workers um, from the preliminary. We put a shout out on QATV and um, we got some very interested people. We put them right to work. Um, there's been some training. We're gonna do some more training um, from March. Um, we encourage people to um, get involved, um, to come out. We do pay. We're gonna need all that we can get and, and right now there are a lot of people in training and that's a positive thing coming from March. Mary, talk to us a little bit about why you're going to vote today. Um, because I feel there's too much overdevelopment here in Quincy, especially in neighborhoods. Not bad if it's downtown or it's near the train stations, but I feel overdevelopment in the neighborhoods. How long have you? I've lived here for 52 years. So you've seen a lot of changes. I've seen changes, yeah. right, right. Um, so are you voting uh, uh, against the mayor today? I certainly am. Uh, and what do you hope for the, the future of the city? You know, what would you like to see the, uh, the future go? I feel what they're doing downtown is fine. And I, you know, do hope, you know, for more 
um, maybe stores and things like that, and not just hair salons and things like that. If you could please tell us your name. Celeste McGlone. I live on Sturdivant Road in Ward 5. And tell us a little bit about why you voted today. Oh, it's a privilege that I that I value and I take for very seriously. And um, I'm here to support a longtime friend, Mayor Tom Koch, and others that are on the ballot. So you know there's been a lot of discussion about all the developments going in across the city, uh, especially for this particular election. What's your view of that? I think it's good for the city. I think it's t been long overdue. Um, we are so close to the city of Boston, and it's a natural progression for the city of Quincy to become the next hotspot around the South Shore area as a gateway city to Boston. And um, I think it's good. I think it's sh it, we're we're changing the fabric of the city, and with with the new people coming in and moving in. And um, excuse me, Quincy has so much to offer. I'm glad that other people are being able to take advantage of it. Welcome back to the Quincy Access Television Studios for continuing live coverage of Quincy votes. We have numbers to, uh, to share with you, election results tonight, and special guests. So we will uh, introduce one of those guests right now. Uh, joining us is Noel DeBona. He is a candidate for re-election who we just noticed uh, topped the ticket and will, in fact, be serving another term. So, Noel, welcome. And thank you, guys. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, um, thank you for having me in here in QATV and doing all the results. Um, first off, I want to thank God for everything possible for here today. Um, I also want to thank um, um, my team. You know, my, my dad has been a huge supporter. I mean, he's, he works. Um, that's where I get my hard work, that work ethic from, you know. My dad and my team of Patty, Jeff Craig, Jimbo, Wesley, the crew, um, my wife that, that, you know, we still have the three kids at home, the seven, five, and uh, three-year-old. I have my son Tyler out holding signs with us today. Uh, he wanted you to put him out. to work. He put him to work. You know, he was, he was enjoying the bake sales. Uh, I want to say thank you to all the PTOs out there that put the bake sales together. You know, we, we, we loaded up on a lot of goodies. Um, you know, really, really what today is all about is everybody that helped me out. I want to thank the voters out there, the voters that went to the polls today and gave me a vote. Um, I want to thank everybody who put lawn signs in, in their yards. I want to thank everybody for, for, for coming out and voting today. I also want to thank um, and, and actually ask the people that didn't vote for me tonight, that didn't give me a vote, that I could earn your vote over the next two years. Uh, I'd love to probably run for re-election again. Um, you know, so, you know, really what it comes down to is hard work. Um, I worked real hard for the, for the, for, um, the position. Um, when I found out there was other candidates in the race and we had five candidates, I said, you can never take anything lightly. And um, in our camp, what we teach is you just got to go out and just do the basic basics and uh, get out there and, and meet the people. Um, I went around into certain neighborhoods two or three times to meet as many people as I possibly could. So um, I didn't know if you guys had any questions or what was going on. I just, I just thank you for everybody for coming out today. I, I did. I just had a, a question regarding uh, the mayor recently held a press conference regarding a special education uh, a, a center, a special education center in the city and how you felt about that. Well, you know, it's going to come in front of the city council level and it's more of the funding part. The $8.5 million funding part is going to come in front of the council. And you have your three former school committee members that are now counselors and we'll vet it at that level. And if and when it does get approved, it goes to the school committee and it talks about different components of uh, how many children and, and which kids that are um, out of district that will stay there that will go to the school committee to diversify that so but we'll we'll vet it at the at the council level for the funding part of it it's it's in the long run what I'm looking at it right now and I have to I have to look at it a little bit more is I think it's going to save us money in the long run it's going to save us funding and I think it's a great to start off with our younger kids to be able to have a center to go to now an in-house very similar to Braintree and I got to look at it a little bit more um, I, I tell you to be very honest with you and Frank a campaign takes a lot out of you. Um, there's, a, there's a governing side where you're doing the job, and then there's the campaigning side. And, and the campaigning side can, can really take a lot of time and effort away from doing the job. So we're going to get back to work now. You know, it, It's back to work, and um, I'm looking forward to it. I know education has always been a priority of yours. Yes. And I know if we look back a bit, uh, one of the things that one of the items that you were very uh, – uh, felt very strongly about was the uniforms for the band. 
Absolutely. You know, I, I started this, this journey six years ago, six and a half years ago, uh, when I ran for school committee. And I started off, we did an ad hoc committee once I got elected, and we, we you know, tried to get the band program up and running better. Um, we had an ad hoc committee at the school committee level with Dr. Cristofaro and my other colleagues in, uh, on, on the school committee. And eventually down the road, we actually got funding for it. And uh, the band program looks great, the, the combined Quincy North Quincy band program. Um, and their I'm, uniforms. They their uniform are fantastic. fantastic. And, and they've, they've, they're, they're outreaching into other um, cities and towns and doing other, you know, marching bands. So, uh, you know, other parades all across. So I'm looking forward to, to coming up in the Christmas parade coming up soon. Um, you know, uh, I, I just, you know, it, it, it's, um, it, it's emotional when you're out there. And you never know what the sentiment's going to be. And every election, um, the city is changing. It's evolving. And um, we're going to do the co new consensus next year that will look to go over the 100,000 um, people population-wise and will give us an extra type of funding. But um, I think right now looking in, I mean, right, right now you're going to go into presidential election. You've got Super Tuesday coming up. You have uh, also the statewide elections. There's going to be highly contested races coming in here. And I think the, um, the old school, I'm going to wait my turn. I think those days are over. I think you're going to get a highly contested 2020 races out there. Um, and uh, you look at Boston, Boston City Council, and, and they're looking to make movements here. So um, we got the municipal, municipal one over, and I think the statewide are going to open up right after this, and you're, you're going to hear a lot of um, traction on them. But, um, you know, obviously the four major, major ingredients that I'll continue to, 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 to activate is, um, you know, the situation with the traffic and the overdevelopment, the parking concern, and our taxes. And those are the four major things that I continuously hear out there. Um, but I'll continue to advocate for, for education, Public safety and infrastructure improvements throughout the city and um, nuts and bolts of it. But I, I'm gonna, I owe both of you um, some segments. Yes. Joe, you in the Please. morning, I owe you a segment. I owe you an afternoon one. So well, we got your number. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Congratulations. So I'll be in to talk more about the issues and stuff. But Appreciate thank you, everybody else. Thank you, voters, for voting me back in, and I'm looking forward to representing you. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, Noel. Thanks thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Noel DeBona, Councillor at Large, uh, re-elected for another two years, uh, topping the ticket in Quincy this evening, 9,675 votes. Again, these are unofficial results that are scrolling along the bottom of your screen. 31 of 31 precincts uh, are in, and thanks again to all of our volunteers for getting those numbers to us this evening. Joining us, uh, another guest has joined us in the studio, Frank Rabino, who was a candidate for Councillor at Large. Uh, Frank, uh, welcome. Thank you for having me. Welcome back. And we should say a member of Quincy Access yes, Television. Yes, Quincy Access Television member. Yes. Appreciate that. Proud so, member. <laughs> yes. Uh, this was your first time at shot at elective office. How yes, did uh, how yes. did it go? I, I was a first time candidate. Yep. Uh, it was an amazing experience. Really. Um, I'm very happy with uh, the effort that I made. Um, I especially enjoyed canvassing all the neighborhoods, knocking on doors, meeting with people, mm -hmm. chatting about uh, the issues, listening to concerns. It was just an amazing experience. Would you do it again? Uh, maybe not right away. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break first. Sure. Well, uh, 2,880 votes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's it's humbling. citywide when you think somebody would cast oh, a vote yeah, for you. Yeah. What was it the first to say, gee, I think I'd, I'd like to try this? Uh, I enjoy being active and involved here in Quincy. Um, I have a background that I think is beneficial to the city council, and I wanted to give it a try. You have a financial but background mostly, yes, so yes. you thought you'd bring uh, that Accounting, finance, business background. Sure. How do you think the city's finances are run, Frank? Uh, well, one of the top concerns that I was hearing from residents is uh, the t taxes, the tax burden in the city, yep. how property taxes move higher year after year, even though the, the property tax rate declines because the assessed values keep moving higher. So I would hope that the city council um, does attack that problem because it's something that most of the residents care strongly about. Resident conscious development. Talk about yes. that and, and uh, what was meant by that statement. Um, do, well, here in Quincy, we have so many um, residential developments that, go, that are going up. Continue to go up. Yes, and continue to go up. Um, but um, there's not a whole lot of variety as far as things like new restaurants, new bars, new coffee shops, plus the things that um, people really need, the services, medical services, urgent care centers. Um, we do have a medical facility that's about to go up in Quincy Center, but there's a lot more that we can do to bring medical services to the city. So I would like to see uh, the city council, the mayor, the administration focus some more on that. Um, a ferry service that's more than temporary. Yes, exactly, yes. 
Yeah, will but you become more involved in, say, community groups or civic associations, Frank, uh, or maybe at attending city council meetings in the future? Yes, yeah, I have, yeah, okay. here and there. Yes, okay, yeah. so you're, you're, you're not going away anytime soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, I, I'll still be here. <laughs> and yeah. just, just looking, is my home now. Yes. And yeah. looking at the, uh, the ferry service, the MBTA, yes. the bus service, uh, when you were out and about, um, do people find it easy to get around? Uh, traffic congestion was another big concern mm. that I was hearing over and over again from residents. To, to try to get to, from one end of the city to the other, it can be very difficult. So, and, and traffic congestion is an issue that we can attack from several different angles. So the, the ferry service that you mentioned earlier, um, it's a great way to get cars off the road and swap them for ferries on the water. Uh, we also need to take a look at some of our most dangerous intersections, the, the intersections where uh, time and time again, there, there's an accident that impacts traffic. Um, uh, also need, need to look at how Uber and Lyft is having an impact here in our city. In other pl cities such as Cambridge, Somerville, Boston, uh, they have dedicated Uber and Lyft drop-off and pick-up locations. Um, dedicated curbside space where Uber and Lyft can do their pickups and drop-offs. So that's a concept that we can bring to Quincy because instead of the Uber stopping wherever it wants and uh, causing a traffic jam, mm -hmm. Uh, th there's now dedicated space for them to do that. Yeah, they've already done it at the, at the airports. Uh, oh, yeah, the airports and other places where yeah. they're doing it, yes. You were very successful in helping to uh, spearhead Quincy's first Pride Day. Uh, is that something you'll yes, stay active yes. in? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Quincy's first LGBT, pr first and then second LGBT. Right, Pride. Right. Talk, uh, talk about the second and how it uh, developed from the first or continues to develop. Uh, well, the, f the first one was an enormous success. We had around 1,000 people attending. Um, when we first started planning it, we thought uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be grateful if we get 50 or 100 <laughs> people and we'll just do hamburgers and hot dogs on the, on the grill. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being um, a ton of support, close to 1,000 people. Oh. And there were many people who supported by donating uh, services, donating raffle prizes, things of that, that nature. And we were just very grateful um, by the enormous support. And, and that, of course, led to the second year. It also led to us becoming an official nonprofit status. Quincy Pride is now an official nonprofit organization. Sure. Well, we hope you'll stay active here at Quincy Access oh, yeah. Television. And uh, yes. we look forward to working with you in the future, Frank. Thanks Thank for you so back. much. Thank, Thank you, you, Frank. Okay. Good to see you. Pleasure. We, we should probably run down the results of uh, the unofficial results of the uh, election for you one more time this evening. And we'll start with the race uh, for mayor this evening. And as you see, incumbent uh, Thomas Koch. Uh, 9,377 votes. Challenger Brenda Ryan at 3,902 votes. And these are unofficial, uh, but uh, we're pretty good by now. We've got this down pretty close. <laughs> Counselor at large, uh, Noel DeBona, the incumbent, 9,675, followed by Anita Lang, 8,377. Then Ann Mahoney at 8,686. Frank Rubina, who we just heard from, 2,880 votes. And Joanne Sullivan Cantor, 2,235 votes. In the race for Ward 1, incumbent Dave McCarthy at 1,954 and Joe Murphy, 1,005. Ward 3, the incumbent Ian Kane with 1,514. Eriberto Soto at 486. The race for uh, Ward 5, the open seat there, and Stephen Christo, 1,086 votes and Charles Phelan, 1,372. And in the race for the Award 6 Council seat, the incumbent William Harris, 1,766. Challenger William Eisenberg at 833 votes. Moving on now to the race for school committee. There were uh, three seats up this, uh, this year, and Paul Bergoli, incumbent with 8,000 votes. Kathy Hubley, 8,508. Courtney Pertios, 5,990. And Frank Santoro, at 6,458 votes. And well there you done. Have it. Yes. <laughs> I read really well. <laughs> and I try to follow you, you on did the computer. Great. I, sometimes I slip. My son could be a lot, uh, is a lot quicker than yeah. I am on the electronic <laughs> devices. Uh, again, we, we want to um, thank all of our members, all of our volunteers for staffing the polls. As soon as those polls close, they call the numbers in. They call them in to our phone bank here That's at right. Quincy Access Television. 
then they come up from the downstairs to the upstairs where uh, the studio is and uh, we get those or rather there there's a crew behind the scenes that um, that gets those numbers uh, put on the screen so that uh, you can see them at home the same time that we see them. It's a machine. It's a well-oiled <laughs> machine. There's no question about it. And I will say, too, this particular municipal election, more than others in the past, at least since I've been here at QATV, we've managed to cover so many different candidates' forums, uh, candidates' debates all throughout the city o over the past month, month and a half or so. Thanks so much to uh, our volunteers and members who have gone out in these evenings and videoed uh, those meetings, those candidates' debates and forums to be able to bring them to the viewers, post them on our website um, as well, QATV.org. All the candidates participated in the delivering five-minute messages as well uh, to the uh, voters over the past couple of months after the uh, preliminary election. Those also on our website. And all that could not happen uh, without just a vast crew of folks that give up their own personal time uh, to make it true. And we should mention that uh, Joe and I, when we were out today, uh, we got uh, compliments for exactly what Joe was uh, talking about uh, just a moment ago. We also have received emails uh, thanking us for delivering the coverage that, again, Joe, you spoke of. It's always nice to hear, and it's a good uh, time to remind you that you, too, can become a member here at QATV. Just be a Quincy resident, uh, 18 years or older, mm -hmm. and uh, you can be part of, uh, of a great crew of folks that are truly committed to bringing uh, community information uh, to the city of Quincy. Well, Joe, I want to thank you for joining me here this evening. Always a pleasure. And, of course, our... Director uh, John Caleri, our executive director John Caleri, as well as the entire staff, the entire crew that have worked here this evening to bring you Quincy Votes 2019. Thank you and good night.